So we have some brand new details in regards to the First Descendants, very first season one of Invasion. This is absolutely massive, the information they've given out today, guys. And today we go through everything. How's it going, guys? My name is DPJ. Now, to celebrate the amazing support I've had on this game, even though its view base is slowly declining because the game's just getting to that stage now i'm still giving away ultimate descendants on a weekly basis now to win one or the equivalent in caliber it's as simple as this drop a like on the video leave a comment down below and make sure you are subbed i will pick one winner from the comment section and announce them at the end of the week so good luck everybody also join my discord down below to check out previous winners and join my amazing first descendant community okay so they dropped a massive post over on reddit uh, the dev note volume 12 season one invasion update announcement where they reveal many many new details into the coming season uh, which arrives around the 30th of august so let's get into it people okay so they start with in this dev note i would like to share a preview of the season one update please check the major update details along with the weekly updated content schedule for season one Yes guys, there's more content coming along the way. In fact, the details I already know have been split over three dates, uh, meaning Frey Night isn't coming day one, season one, which we'll get into. Okay, so, just when you thought Corel's Legion had retreated, they're coming back with more powerful tactical weapons. The first Descendant season one update, Invasion, features a new episode along with the new Invasion events. A new Descendant Haley, Ultimate Freyna, Ultimate Weapons, New Intercept Battle of Death Stalker, a season exclusive progression system called Inversion Reinforcement. And they finish here with saying, uh, starting August 29th, offering a variety of content with new challenges and rewards. But there's way more details, guys. So the first Ascendant is planning to provide seasonal updates and Invasion is the first step of this journey. We'll explore the secrets of the Descendants and unravel the story of Ingress as we journey through the seasons. You will discover new weapons, new Descendants will join the war and their Descendants will become more powerful. Of course, the season will progress in a way that preserves the progression of your descendants and your collectibles. Okay, so Corel's new weapon. Corel has prepared a new tactical weapon for revenge. This tactical weapon forged from the ancestors technology discovered by Aemon is the Vulgus Legion's new strategy against descendants. When the invasion season begins, the invasion event will occur daily in two of the hard infiltration operation dungeons. In the dungeon where the invasion has begun, you can start by selecting either infiltration operation or invasion. And the invasion event can be cleared twice per day for each dungeon. So that's very interesting. Invasion dungeons will put your skills and wits to the test. To hold back the descendants, Corel has built a defense system with different mechanisms for each legion. Uh, these dungeons are solo challenges that feature different routes, puzzles and strategies from the normal dungeons, where your objective is to fend off the invasion as quickly as possible. So as I mentioned in my other video guys, this is basically like solo speedrunning activities. Sound quite cool. Okay, so now we get further details on Haley. Okay, so they say new descendant Haley Scott. A once a ghouly unit supply soldier who gained fame as a legendary sniper, Haley is now the newest member of the Descendant Corps. Not only can she take out enemies from a distance with her anti material sniper cannon, uh, she can also rapidly decrease her body temperature to spew chill when emotions run high. While Haley is an admirer of Viesa, who can manipulate chill at will, and is a cold bloody sniper on the battlefield, she's also a warm hearted hero who loves to make snow crystals and bring smiles to children's faces. Okay, so now, guys, we get a little like snippets of what her abilities do and first up we have cryo round instantly fires a cryo round that automatically tracks the enemy uh, deals damage and inflicts cryo uh, which deals additional damage along with Haley's firearm damage this just reminds me of that iron man shoulder mounted cannon that just locks on and destroys everything looks pretty cool we then have storm snare 
fires a freezing beam that unleashes a chill vortex around you and knocks enemies back. Increase cryo on enemies that take damage. Okay. And then we have Cold Fury. Haley's movement speed gradually decreases, but her firearm and skills critical hit rate and firearm penetration all increase significantly. And then we have Zenith. Replaces Haley's weapon with her unique weapon, the Anti-Material Sniper Cannon. Penetration of the Anti-Material Sniper Cannon and firearm attack greatly increase and deal additional chill skill damage. Recovers MP upon successfully attacking weak points and increases the cooldown the more bullets you have remaining when the skill ends. Okay, very unique. Now I'm not going to lie, I like the look of Haley, but she wasn't going to be a character I was ever going to rush to use, I was more interested in Ultimate Freyna, but looking at these skills and seeing what they do and how they work, she's very interesting. Okay, so moving on. Inversion Reinforcement for Season Progression. Descendants experience a change in their RK as they've come into contact with the Iron Hearts multiple times. Their RK began to draw energy from a destroyed Iron Heart. Embracing this energy as a source of strength, the Descendants can now grow new abilities through the Inversion Reinforcers. Now that does sound cool. Hunt improves the Descendants' basic stats. Attribute improves the Descendants' attribute resistance. Recovery improves the descendant's recovery and survival, receives a defense buff that activates under certain conditions, and then we have season, receives an effect that is useful upon inversion dungeons. Okay, so inversion reinforcement is a progression system that only lasts for the season. You can learn the inversion reinforcement effect using the iron heart particle which can be earned by clearing invasion dungeons or being active in the hard difficulty fields. You can choose three of the effects that have been unlocked and when you unlock all four of the effects in a line, you automatically acquire that line's collection effect. I get the gist of this. So collection effects are passive effects that are always applied during the season. This means that if you unlock all inversion reinforcement effects, you can utilize three selected effects and five collection effects from each line in battle. So that does sound very, very interesting too. Okay, so what about ultimate Freyna? So that's what we have here, Freyna's Awakening. Still trapped in the day of the room zero incident, Freyna's trauma has stopped her time. In season 1 we follow the story of Freyna who continues to grieve alone. In this Descendant exclusive story you'll explore the inner mind of a crestfallen hero who is trapped in guilt and self-hatred for surviving alone after failing to save her love and comrades. Will she be able to overcome her trauma? You will then get to meet Ultimate Freyna who broke through her limits. There are also exclusive modification modules for her. Now Freyna's ultimate descendant will be added with this seasonal updates as the first descendant's story and the first descendant's lore expands. After season one and ultimate Freyna, the next update to the ultimate descendants will launch sequentially, starting with the initial descendants to join Corpse. Okay, that's cool. Okay, so now we move on to ultimate weapons. So first up we have Excarva, a powerful and versatile ultimate weapon. Uh, this assault rifle arrives with this update as a free battle pass reward. Excarva charges voltage when attacking enemies and uses the charge voltage to fire energy grenades. Pretty cool. Then we have the Thrust Watcher. Acquirable through gameplay, this scout rifle reduces an enemy's chill resistance and increases your chill skill damage each time you hit the enemy at long range. It's a perfect weapon for Vyasa or Haley who uses chill attribute skills. Sounds cool, not gonna lie. Okay, so moving on, the Loom Threat over Ingress Deathstalker Intercept Battle. The Colossi still threaten an Ingress from behind the Dimensional Wall, and it's time to meet the most powerful Colossus of Season 1, Deathstalker. Deathstalker emerges from the darkness and unleashes attacks based on poison and fear, stalking the descendants in the darkness of the void. Deathstalker is more formidable than any other Colossus you've intercepted. You must jump back into the void to protect Ingress from this menace. Solve the mystery shrouded in the dark and intercept the Deathstalker. Dorker. Pretty cool. Okay, so now we move on to the highest difficulty infiltration operation and ETA 0. 
In Season 1, the highest difficulty of the infiltration operations will be added. It's a proving ground to test and polish your optimized builds. Form a team or challenge yourself to more difficult infiltration operations in public matchmaking. Prove the strength of the descendants and acquire loot that can only be obtained in more difficult infiltration operations. Along with this, a mysterious merchant ETA Zero visits Albion. Every time he visits, he shows up with a variety of products that can be purchased with exclusive currency. With each visit, he brings different products. Since he visits Albion with blueprints for descendants and ultimate weapons and occasionally hard to find consumables, don't miss out on visiting ETA Zero. Doesn't this guy sound exactly like Zer from Destiny? Am I the only one thinking that? Yeah, I probably am. <laughs> okay, so Season 1 Invasion Update Schedule. All content will be updated sequentially during the Invasion Season. So we can see right here guys the dates and when things will arrive. So the first update is August 29th. Here we get the new descendant of Haley and Haley's skins. Can't wait to see them. Uh, the Invasion Dungeon, the Invasion Reinforcement, the Invasion Season Battle Pass and the Ultimate Weapon of Scarva. Okay, so September 26th, which is almost a month later, this is the second update of Season 1, we get the new Intercept Battle of Death Stalker, the new Ultimate Weapon of Frost Watcher, uh, new Ultimate Skins and Ultimate Descendant Exclusive Spawn Effects. And then guys, we have a third update, which is two months after, on October 30th, this is the third update. I'll be on holiday then. Uh, here we get Ultimate Freyna and the Freyna exclusive story, the Ultimate Freyna modification modules, Haley modification modules, new Ultimate modules, and the highest difficulty of the infiltration operations, as well as ETA Zero. So that's what we'll be getting, guys. Like I said, it isn't all coming on the first day of this season one on August 29th, which I thought it was. Now just spreading this content out, trying to make it last. Hey. Your thoughts, tell me down below. Additional improvements applied to Season 1. Uh, finally, here's the news of the improvements that will be applied with Season 1 on August 29th. Void Fragment and Fusion Reactor Loop Improvements. Cool. It has been improved that playing Void Fragments once on hard difficulty now grants enough Void Shards to use the Fusion Reactor once. Consequently, the amount of Void Shards rewarded in Special Operations has been increased. Additionally, Void Shards required for the Fusion Reactor have been consolidated into a single type. That is amazing news. Now the same type of Void Shards will drop from both Void Fragments and the Void Fusion Reactor uh, within the same battlefield. That's what we like to hear. This change enhances the convenience of farming void shards and optimizes the monster placement for representative void fragments of each attribute. Finally, the fusion reactor now acquires void shards when using the reconstructed device rather than at the start of the mission. This adjustment ensures that void shards are not consumed if you accidentally enter the fusion reactor. That's a pretty cool change too. Well, I actually already thought I was in effect. I'm just a noob. Okay, so hard infiltration operation improvements. As previously announced, random options will be replaced with preset selections. Uh, the presets offer three options, 0%, 125% and 250%. And descendants who choose the same preset can play together in public matchmaking. That's cool. In addition, to prevent the number of types of matchmaking pool from growing indiscriminately, descendants who select the same infiltration operation will now be matched together, regardless of their selected rewards. Instead, the global effects that were applied based on these selected rewards will be removed. Okay, and lastly, the timed occupation mission will be removed from hard infiltration operations and replaced with the extermination battle, where the time can be reduced based on the descendants. Gil. Okay, cool. Okay, so socket type saving feature improvements. This I'm interested in. Now, once you assign a socket type, the socket type granted uh, to that slot is permanently saved. So you can easily change it to a previously granted socket type at any time. For example, if a descendant changes an Almondine socket to a Malachite socket, you can easily choose between Almondine and Malachite in that socket 
afterward. Additionally, the socket type applied to loadout setting 1 can also be used for setting 2 and 3 as well, allowing you to grant multiple socket types only to the socks that acquire multiple socket types uh, depending on your build. Now this is the change I predicted that would happen about a week and a half ago and it's absolutely incredible, I absolutely love it. So if you apply two socket types to the same socket, the same module slot, you can switch in between saving yourself those capacity types on the module you have in applied that is great news for builds it really is okay so descendants balance adjustments oh no here we go Jaber's turret has been improved to apply stats such as his skill power modifier and additional attack and will be able to be enhanced by descendant modules. Additionally, Jaber's turret sync. Uh, this skill has been adjusted to apply uh, to the turret Jaber has summoned and if the turret engineering modification module is equipped, the summoned turret has been improved to create an area. Okay, cool. Blair's pit master skill has been improved to have a more enhanced effect based on a number of flame zones. The duration of the blaze up skill has been increased and the MP cost has been reduced. When using the extinguished skill, uh, the flame zone will no longer be retrieved. Instead, the taste of aggression effect will stack based on the number of flame zones. Pretty cool. The damage of the burn taste skill has been increased and a skill button input feature has been added to allow cancelling the skill mid-use. Additionally, the max stacks of the incendiary bomb modification module has been increased and the performance of the deadly cuisine skill has been enhanced when the classic chef modification module is equipped. Okay, so now on to Ajax. So Ajax is orbital barrier and hyper cube skills are now affected by attribute resistance making them stronger. The body enhancement modification module increases HP, defense and shield and when using these skills avoid energy will always recover to 100% allowing the use of enhanced skills more often. Additionally the void charge modification module will allow the void walk skill to be stacked and avoid walk and expulsion skills have been modified to increase damage based on defense. Uh, when using an enhanced skill, the cooldown will now reset. So pretty cool guys and now on screen you can see various UX improvements. If you want to read through them, be my guest. But yes guys, there we have it, an absolutely massive update in regards to uh, this announcement, the season one invasion update announcement, some great, great new details. I'm a little bit put off by the fact that they're spreading out the content over three months, maybe. Uh, but yeah, let me know your thoughts on that down below. I'm excited to see the new trading vendor too. Zer, weekly Zer, you know it's coming, guys. But there we have it. Let me know your thoughts down below, guys. If you enjoyed the video, leaving a like really helps out. If you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. And hopefully, guys, I will see you on that next. One.